It was early 2018. Businesses with even the slight chance of digital growth were in demand. Digitization stocks were selling like hot cakes. The stock of a relatively little known company, Bakalangi, was making news headlines. Primarily present in the e-governance domain, Bakalangi's business involves bringing together all the hardware, software and ground activation required for the launch and management of e-governance initiatives. In January 2018, I observed how the market capitalization of Bakarangi had crossed that of Pharma Behemoth Lupin. A perfect case of an exciting business gaining dominance over a boring one. And mind you, Bakarangi was already a thousand bagger. It was not difficult to see why investors were scampering to get a share of the pie. Nothing about Bakarangi seemed to surprise the streets. Without a solid moat, Bakarangi's growth seemed unsustainable. Its high margins had no reason to keep soaring, and return ratios were bound to plummet. But the stock continued to move into higher orbits, making my assumptions seem foolish. Eventually, the steep valuations that the stock had acquired over the years had few takers. It crashed by 95% in a few months. Bakarangi may not have been the poster boy of 2018 market crash, but it left a mark nevertheless. Why am I telling you about Bakarangi? Well, every market crash has its own story. You may have heard about the credit rating agencies in 2008. In the US, they were blamed for not warning about Lehman's possible bankruptcy and offering AAA ratings to Wall Street firms that were not financially sound. In India, in January 2009, Satyam's Ramalinga Raju confessed that he had cooked the company's financial books for years. This time, it was not the credit rating agency, but the auditor, PwC, which was in limelight. It took the courts a decade to penalize PwC for this fraud. In 2018, it took the resignations of more than 30 auditors in six months for the market to take note. You see, you face a big problem when such rating agencies and accounting frauds come to light. It's typically too late to act. No one warns you when the fraud is happening, only after it has happened. The stock crashes and you are left with huge losses. Even the exchanges and regulators know little. Else why would Bakarangi find a place in the BSC 100 index just two months before its corporate governance issues became known? So the only recourse is to look for data that points to unreasonable growth or margins that are too good to be true. For instance, the election of Joe Biden as the US president brought climate change in global focus. The voluntary market for carbon credits became active. And soon, a little-known indoor-based firm offering consultancy in selling carbon credit became a stock market darling. EKI Energy, which listed little over a year ago, is already up nearly 10,000%. The company specializes in facilitating trading in carbon credits. If you implement a project, say a solar farm that will fight global warming, you will get carbon credits, which are market tradable financial instruments. A carbon credit represents usually a ton of carbon emissions saved. Why would anyone buy carbon credits? Well, the companies in the West, for whom saving a ton of carbon emission is expensive, simply buy these carbon credits from wherever saving a ton of carbon is cheaper, as in India. EKI Energy is the first listed carbon offsets company and the market price of those offsets, which comprise most of the firm assets, was soaring until early 2022. But now, their value is in question. And as the doubt grows, EKI's shares have fallen almost 50% from their peak. The worth of a carbon offsets hinges on its usefulness in cutting worldwide emissions and not all are equally helpful. On the lightly regulated voluntary carbon market, the majority, including most of those developed by EKI, may not help fight against the global warming at all. These are offsets tied to renewable energy schemes, wind and solar farms, mostly developed by large conglomerates like the Adani Group. Carbon offsets gave developers an extra revenue stream designed to make the difference between an unattractive project and a profitable one. In theory, the carbon payments were necessary to get more renewable energy into the mix, providing an additional environmental benefit. EKI Energy has a number of marquee customers, 
रिन्यू पावर एस बी एनर्जी अडानी ग्रीन को आदित्य बिरला ग्रुप हिंदुस्तान जिंक सीमेंस इंडिया अमंगस्ट अदर्स दीज कंपनीज जनरेट कार्बन क्रेडिट्स ई के आई विच हैज वन थर्टी पीपल वर्किंग इन ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज हेल्प दीज कंपनीज सेल द क्रेडिट्स नाउ द कंपनी इज टू पेंड दिस ग्रोथ नंबर्स एंड मार्जिन मे बी रियल बट दे आर सर्टनली टू गुड टू बी सस्टेनेबल फॉर अ बिजनेस दैट इज सो डिपेंडेंट ऑन रेगुलेशन जियो पॉलिटिक्स एंड वॉलेंट्री परचेजेज द क्लाइमेट चेंज मेगा ट्रेंड इज बट अ मिस नोम ई के आई एक्सपेक्ट्स टू ट्रिपल द ट्रेडिंग ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट्स ऑफ द नेक्स्ट फ्यू ईयर्स अगेंस्ट दैट ऑफ द लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स and when the carbon trading market opens up the management believes that the throughput will be at least 5 times the stock of ekai energy reminds me of bakarangi investors would do well to stay skeptical of such stocks in fact you should also consider throwing out these stocks before a market crash hope you like this video please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for more such videos on safe investing thanks for watching